Hello, I'm Odin, and today I'm going to continue my full suit Gundam build. This time, I'll be adding the arm units. I'm using a 3D model of a Gundam to create my patterns that'll fit Joe. The RX-78-2 arms are made up of multiple smaller parts. There's a shoulder, bicep, forearm, etc. And each is mounted to the inner frame which means I can make individual parts and then attach them to a suit with Joe as the inner frame. I'm starting with the forearm. I have the pattern for the outline of the sides and I plan on using 10 millimeter HD foam. I need to remove 10 millimeter from the inner panels so I can keep it the right shape. I trace only one copy of the side and then cut three more sections that are of the same size. Tape them all together and I can run all four pieces for both arms at once through the bandsaw. Using a bandsaw will keep the edges 90 degrees, which is nice. And a bandsaw is a nice tool to have, and it speeds things up, but each of these could have been cut with a razor knife just as well. I adjust the table to 45 degrees and cut the beveled edge onto each of the arm panels. The other two sides of the forearm box are made out of a couple of smaller 10 millimeter panels, and they need a cutout for the elbow joint. By gluing the angled pieces I cut off from the big side panels to the inside edges, there's more surface area to glue the panels together, and they should be a little stronger. Little pieces of paper help to keep the contact cement on the seams from prematurely sticking together. When I'm ready to set the seam, I can pull the paper out and line up the parts. Much easier than trying to stick all the sides together at once. The front and back of each arm is the same, with the forward panel slightly offset. The wrist opening is smaller and needs an extra liner of 10 millimeter strips. The cuff on the wrist is a thin box of 10 millimeter foam, but I need to cut an angle into the sides because the box tapers towards the hand. But it wouldn't be safe to hold a piece this thin next to the saw, so I cut down some scrap foam and make a plug that fits inside the wrist. Yeah, fits great. Now I have something safer to hold on to while cutting all the angles into the cuff. I use contact cement to glue on the cuffs, and the forearms are basically done. For the elbow joint, I made my pattern using the same website I had used for the rocket engines on the backpack unit. The inside is a cylinder with a flat bottom, and inside the cylinder are a couple of small detail parts. The biceps are made much like the forearms, but the sides have deep panel lines. I glue a layer of 6mm foam onto the 10mm foam base. This gets me my panel lines. But this will only work for the outside walls of the bicep. I want to use just 2mm foam over 4mm foam on the inside walls. That's because a human needs to fit inside of this robot, and I'm making sure the inside walls for the arms are a little thinner. And then add some 10mm spacers so the panels look like the same from the outside. All of these panels get a beveled edge as well. I used a piece of wood as a guide. It made the cutting of the really short edges a bit easier. All the sides are cut from 6mm foam with a 2mm panel. And I add those cutoff angles again, more surface area for the glue. And then contact cement the sides in place. And I also sanded the edges that fit to the elbow. They, they have a curved sloping shape to them. It's kind of hard to see here, but the slope is right there. The upper part of the arm, it's, it's a panel that goes under the shoulder. It's just a three-sided panel, which is built up of smaller plates. I glue a couple of wedges to a larger four millimeter plate and then attach that to the three-sided panel with some strips glued to the top. Then I cut a 45 degree angle on both ends and add more two millimeter panels to the top. Then another pair for the sides. Easy to explain, but to make a set was almost two hours of building. Before I get going on the shoulders, I plug in my wood burner and start adding panel lines and details to the parts. I use a Draftsman's eraser shield to aid with the placement of the bolts. And then I use it for some of the smaller panel details. I line the corners of the shield up with the parts in the arm and I can keep the detail placement equal on both sides. In addition to the eraser shield, I use a sewing hem gauge for some of the lines. <laughs> really, any metal ruler or shape will work even a custom-made aluminum one. This little rounded shape is all over the RX-78 too, and by cutting my own guide, they're all gonna be the same. 
Panel lines are a big part of Gundam. Every piece has them. And I really want to get the shoulder pieces right. There are lots of small panels, some on the front corners, and the top is not square. Plus, the front panels are 32 millimeters thick. Like the bicep, this has two layers of six millimeter glued onto a layer of 10, which is then glued onto another layer of 10. Most of the pieces were cut larger than I needed because it's easier to glue them together and then follow the correctly cut top layer to get the, all the sides cut correctly. And a bandsaw is a way to go with thicker stacks of foam. I was constantly checking to make sure I had two sets of shoulder panels. It'd be easy for me to cut all of them the same way and not get a mirrored set. I set my table to about 35 degrees and cut the beveled edges of the shoulders. I marked the top edge with an X because this one has a different shallower angle cut to it. So I set the table to about 17 degrees and cut the four top edges. I'm pretty happy with the results. If I let the contact cement set up longer, the little separation of the layers pretty much wouldn't happen. Something I'm thinking about while I'm looking at these parts, am I the only one that's reminded of the head from the Scout Walker from Return of the Jedi? I think it's particularly because of the color of the foam. The top panel is 10 millimeters thick and is cut with a long side at 155 millimeters and the short side is 145 millimeters. And I layer on panel thicknesses, two millimeters for some, and then I add some more at four millimeter. And I feel like I'm replicating the Aztec tiling that was on the outer hull of the Enterprise D. <laughs> this is just not as subtle. I add the 10 millimeter thick angled panels to the front and back, but left them longer than I needed. Instead of matching out the angles for each, I just trimmed them on the bandsaw. Now I really am using this tool to cut corners. When I glue the top to the sides, I match the level of the two millimeter panels. That way there are parts that are on the top that are higher and areas that are lower than the sides. There are two sets of tiny four millimeter panels that fit in the corners of the shoulders. Now it's careful to set them out correctly while applying glue. So I wouldn't have to cut a new one due to glue being on the wrong side. I cut the edge where the panel line needs to extend. These lines needed to run around the sides as well and not just stop along the front and I use a coping saw to cut the bottom. The final detail of the shoulders is a little grill or vent. It attaches just under the edge, right above the arm. Now I still need to make the hands. Work gloves will do for most of the Gundam hands, but for the plates that go in the back, I'm using some gray what the foam. For an EVA foam product, two layers of the six millimeter what the foam feels nearly bulletproof. It's not, of course but compared to craft foam, this is crazy strong. I plan to use a single strip for the back of the fingers, and I don't want it to just sit on top of each finger. So I grind a channel down the middle on one side of the strip. That way, when I glue it to the finger, it kind of wraps around a little bit and doesn't just sit right on top. I use two coats of contact cement to glue the back of the Gundam hand to Joe's work glove. And then I attach each finger armor piece as well. There's three on each finger and two on the thumbs. With all the panels on, they look pretty spot on. And because what the foam was so stiff, the armor plates hardly bend. It's better for robot hands. And I can still use a wood burner for the panel lines that go across the back. So I got all the basic pieces built for the arms, from the shoulders all the way down to the hands. And at this point, we're starting to go through and use plastic dip as a primer on many of the parts. And some of the pieces that we got done earlier, we've already got some additional bits of spray paint added on. We're gonna be painting everything to match the way the earlier suit was done, because it needs to look all as one piece. Um, so, <laughs> on with more painting. The one final problem to solve was how the elbow would work. I got a prototype made from black foam core and it has a double joint just like the elbows on official Gundam kits. Now using the foam core as a template, I trace out the elbow parts and use a pin to poke where I need to make the holes. Then I cut the tabs for attaching the joint to the arms. Now I'm cutting these from black four millimeter what the foam. The stuff is strong enough to make functional straps. So let's see if I can make functional joints. I use Chicago screws to attach the what the foam together. And I'll have to cut out where the two meet so I can glue in a six millimeter riser. Now this is where I'm gonna screw on the elbow piece. Now I don't wanna glue on this one part because if I have a problem with those Chicago screws, I wanna still be able to get to them. 
The flexibility of the wet the foam lets me glue the tabs right to the inside of the arms. Because if I was using Sintra or Styrene, everything would have to line up perfectly. But this joint is flexible while still keeping the pieces of the arm aligned. I really didn't want the forearm to rotate independent of the bicep. The elbow cup is also screwed to the bar that runs across the back of the joint. That way it can stay attached, but move independent of the other parts of the arm. A little cutout at the top allows for a better space for the human to fit inside. Okay. All right. I am a Gundam. You are a Gundam. You have a, you have a big mechanical right arm. Mm-hmm. Okay. We quickly discuss how to attach the shoulder to the chest and decide that a single bolt will do the trick. It'll hold the shoulder on and then allow it to rotate with the upper arm. While I got the shoulders attached, Joe finished applying the custom decals and the panel lining. There are a few more little details that I want to do, but for now, the arms are ready. I have a lot more movement in my arms than I actually thought I would which is actually really, really awesome. It really is surprising how well the arms worked out. Now I'm kind of curious, how much abuse can they really take? It's gonna be fun to take this thing to an actual con and get to see how much abuse this suit will take if it's worn for an extended amount of time. I have more Gundam suit videos planned. The legs are gonna be next, and then the armaments. Now I know that there are lots of different ways that you can arm a Gundam. But this is how Odin makes. Yeah, okay, let's get you out of that thing. Okay. I want to thank Travis Merrill, Santiago Chacon, and all of my Patreon supporters. My Patreon support is the number one thing that makes this show possible. If you like the video, don't forget to subscribe. Have an idea for something for me to make? Please leave a comment below. And if you make any of these projects, you can send me a picture.